it's Saturday coming towards the end of May. Don't forget the two the source of creators two of a Danon uh, event down in Fermoy is next weekend. I'll be there with a lots an amazing lineup. It look it's looking like to be a, an incredible event. And uh, it's ticket only, uh, so you have to book in advance, I think, and pay at the door. If you go to eventbrite.ie, the tickets are there. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a fantastic time. Anyway, uh, Andy Rourke from The Smiths died yesterday, two, today, two days ago. That's uh, very sad. I knew he was sick for a while, but I didn't, I didn't, you don't expect him to die. Uh, tremendous bass player, incredible. See, the thing was with the Smiths that, you know, they were so, all so talented. Mick Joyce is an incredible drummer. He was, a, Andy Rourke was a brilliant bass player. Johnny Marwell, you know, one of the best guitar players I ever lived. And Morris, he is a songwriter and lyricist. They were a really special band. And uh, the, I saw them twice. Once at the Beacon Theatre in New York. And once beside that aircraft carrier, the USS Intrepid. They used to have one of the piers in Manhattan. It was converted into an outdoor rock venue. It was great. And uh, you were the stage was there and the aircraft carrier. This enormous aircraft carrier. Were, I think it was, that was, it was, it was actually at Bear, Pearl Harbor, I think, the Intrepid. I know it was definitely, it was in retirement by then. But the thing was like a city, the, the aircraft carrier. And uh, it whatever it was, the whole of the carrier... It, it, the place had surprisingly good acoustics, so it was a great place to see a band in in a summer evening. And um, the one time I saw them, the first time I saw them, I had tickets to see them in Dublin, but I left Dublin and and I didn't get to see the gig. So I got to see them later. And the time, the first time I saw them at the Beacon Theatre in New York, they finished with. Uh, the bar barbarism begins at home from from the album Meat is Murder. And that bass line boom 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 and at the end of the gig it was just Mick Joyce and Andy Rourke on stage and Andy Rourke was putting in all these extra kind of funky fills. And you just realise that these guys can God, these guys can play. They can they really can play. And like even songs like Heaven Knows Are Miserable Now, everyone remembers that, that jangly kind of there and there and there, but you listen to the bass in the background, it's the way it slides in and out of the chords. And they were so young, too, they were like, you were barely 20, if even, if even that, or just in their very early 20s. And uh, they were such competent musicians and so, so, uh, so confident and comfortable in, in like that level of playing. So, you know, there's never going to be a Smiths reunion now. You know, something I was glad there never was, there should have never been a Smiths reunion. All the bands that I respect the most are the ones that blazed the trail and then broke up. You know, they didn't they didn't become a parody of them a sad parody like U2 became. You know, I'm glad the Clash broke up. I'm glad OREM broke up. I'm glad the Smiths broke up. I'm glad the the police more or less broke up. I'm glad all these bands that were great they just called it a day and didn't become saddles on the on the tour. You look at U2 now in Las Vegas as an absolute disaster, catastrophe from a kind of a credibility point of view. And uh, it's just horrible, you know, horrible. And uh, playing with a different drummer. So Andy Work, thank you for all that amazing stuff and, you know, an unbelievable story. Uh, from one of the greatest bands there ever was. I can remember the day finding out that they broke up and I said, no. And it was not long after the album Strange Ways, Here We Come came out, and which I thought was a great, there was some great songs on that album, like uh, A Rush and a Push. A rush and a push and the land that we stand on is our... Stop me if you heard this one before. Uh, Hairdresser on Fire. The the last album was, was just as good. I mean, that's the thing about the Smiths. Their albums got better and better as they progressed. They never made a naff album. The first album, the Smiths album, it's the, the the one that has this charming man in it, the production sounds a bit flat on some songs. And then they had a load of singles that were released on a kind of a compilation album in America, a double-sided double album. Which, and, uh, but when you heard Meat is Murder and the sound of that album, 
and then the Queen is Dead was even better. I'll never forget the op the bass playing on the Queen is Dead is amazing as well as the guitar playing, the opening track, and then you know even the last album like I said Strange Ways Here We Come fantastic and they were amazing live. But anyway, that was that's me reminiscing about my youth, my not my youth my early twenties, but uh, tremendous memories. You know, Lisa Smith's, I mean, you, you think of the tragedy of bands like the New York Dolls, who just got nothing. You know, a band that, were, they, they suffered from being ahead of their time, where the Smiths were actually just at the right time. T you know, it's true that timing is everything. Speaking of timing and everything, this wave function collapse is incredibly interesting. Things are like weird things are happening, like... In Ireland, uh, I think on a, I was, a, I was in Ireland or England, Christian Morris posted a story there of crisp bags, not cri potato chips, you Americans call them, from that nearly half a century ago washing up on a beach. Like weird things like that. So I was watching, the, 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 I didn't see the match, but uh, West Ham were playing AK Alzheimer, the I think they're called the, the Dutch club. And the Dutch casuals... Um, S ultras try to attack the West Ham supporters. And it's like old fashioned hooliganism is back, football hooligans is back. But at the top of the steps were two lads in their 50s. One of them was huge, right? And they battered down. It was the one of the most amazing things you could ever see. They These two guys protected the fans, these West Ham supporters. Uh, and you can see the whole generational difference there. Where one guy at the top in his 50s who's really overweight would just slam a fist down on some like, you know, 19 year old Dutch casual and he'd fall back and go, oh, and they, and they were like cascading down the steps as these two old guys on the top were battering them, battering them. They weren't even old guys, they were in their 50s. But it showed the generation depth that the, the, the kinetic energy in a, in a guy in his 50s his fist had compared to these Namby Pambies trying to call themselves hard men. And uh, it was amazing. It reminded me of the story of the, the lone Viking on Stamford Bridge, you know, holding the axe on Stamford Bridge, uh, fighting the Anglo-Saxons, fighting the, yeah, fighting the Anglo-Saxons, King Harold's army. It was like that. It was like something epic. So all all fashioned soccer hooliganism is back. But it was just to see the difference in generations in that video clip is remarkable. How two guys in their fifties are way overweight were able to batter the shit out of an army. And it was an army. An army of uh, 19 and 20 year old Dutch hooligans. It, it, you saw it right there. And you saw the difference. And these are the same ones who are going around. Bash the fosh. Bash the fosh. There's a place called Tunapin. It's in Ballymun where I grew up. Uh, it's an industrial area. And inside this industrial area is a small urban village that was actually a country village probably 200 years ago, but it was swallowed up by the city a long time ago. And it's a, it's a beautiful little area. It's a, it's a strip of Victorian, two, it's basically one street of Victorian one-story cottages, very common all over Ireland, very common in Dublin, all over Dublin. There, now, this is a weird one, right? You know, you go to on you go you go on, people go on holiday into Ireland and they go to Dublin and they see all these George these grand Georgian squares, these grand Georgian buildings. You know, well behind them are urban villages, and they were originally would have been where the servants who worked in those Georgian mansions lived, but they're really nice places to live, because you're in a community where everyone knows each other. And the whole city is on your doorstep. So you have the best of both worlds. It's like living in a country village, but you're in the city. And this place in Tala, in Ballymun is like this, Turnabin. And it's, it's mostly very old people living there who are winding down the end of their lives, living in a little urban village that they've lived in all their lives. Now, just like Pier Street, and I'm finding this very interesting, they're putting these 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 military age men refugee quote unquote centers in these urban villages. Um, then these now these would be communities that go back, especially the one that I'm talking about, now, could go back to the Viking times. It's in a place called Santry, which directly translates as Shallon Tree, meaning the old tribe. 
and the or the old the old the old chieftains or something like that and uh that's probably where thor's grove was that was destroyed by brian baru so you're talking about real history in these places and those people that are there today would probably be their ancestors would probably go right back to the vikings and um they're now suddenly and they're in the twilight years of their lives not able to go for a walk because there's gangs of young non-european men hanging around with nothing to do except to intimidate these very old Irish people. Now, they were crying on camera, these elderly people, but they were also fearless. The women were crying, but the men, the old men were fearless. And it reminded me of what I saw in West Ham, you know, at the, at the top of the steps, the, the, the West Ham supporters. The older ones are the only ones that have real balls. Now, if any of these Irish left-wing Antifa types go down to this neighbourhood and start calling these elderly people fascists, It'll really show them up for what they are. These are just old people asking, where has my community gone? It has no political agenda. It's where has, what are you doing to our, where's our community gone? That's all they're asking. And you know what old people are like, they can be frightened very easily and things like that. Which is one of the things that makes growing all the pain. Oh, I'm not like that. Uh, but uh, but uh, it's one of the things that's kind of annoying about old people as they develop these irrational fears and it's like well you've lived all your fucking life you know <laughs> you've had a great time but anyway um these people have, don't have irrational fears they definitely have genuine concerns it's not motivated by bigotry they're not white nationalists they're old people who are just want to know where their urban village is gone that's all that's all they want to know and of course uh you had a situation, you had a similar situation down in County Clare in a small community where they did the same. And the locals barricaded the roads with bales of hay. The farmers put bales of hay out to stop these people from coming in while being transported in by the government. The min one of the ministers went down there and said he wasn't meeting with the locals and had a very a compassionate meeting. Now, look, sorry, folks, this is where we are now. Elected officials who are elected by native Irish people tells the native Irish people, I'm not talking to you, I'm not going there, but then is walking around a group of people from the Middle East and North Africa, military aged men, and practically scattering rose petals at their feet, apologizing for being Irish. This is where we are. Now this is, if you haven't figured out now that the government is the enemy, you never will. You never will. That was a blatant fuck you to the native. You have to understand that what, what was done to the Native Americans with Manifest Destiny is now being done to Native Europeans with diversity. That's what they're planning. Now, the re you ask yourself, is that guy, that, the, the, these ministers, these Irish ministers who mollycoddle these fighting age men from North Africa and from the Middle East while telling the locals to go fuck themselves, uh, why are they doing that? Are they stupid? A lot of them are NPCs. That's def don't 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 you know? Uh, they're they're dead inside, like for Adgar. But the main reason is they know they have backup, and I can guarantee you we're probably months away from countries like Ireland setting up a new military branch similar to the S the Waffen SS, or the the Eisen Group and SS in Germany, a military force with the specific function of being the personal bodyguards of the establishment like the republican guard in iraq in saddam hussein's iraq we're months away from it in years at the most we're getting there and these guys of military age that are being brought in are going to be recruited for this new military force uh, this in this this republican guard this governmental guard and this because they can't use the regular stand the regular army or the defense forces here so that's what they're that's why they've they've underpaid the defense forces here in recent years and so on and there's been a mass exodus from the defense forces here like they're buying naval ships here and people are leaving the navy or the naval service bang 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 they're not because the wages are so poor and uh they'll pay these guys double what they're paying the regular irish defense forces and that's why you have irish ministers walking into communities all over this country and elected officials and saying Fuck you! I'm only here for the I'm only here for the 
the refugees. You can go fuck yourself, you racists. That's because they know that they never have to worry about the people rising up because they'll immediately put, you know, the top end subs in top end machine guns, NATO issued machine guns, into the hands of these young men, many military chain trained, and say, you know, well, you have to protect us from the Irish, and they'll do it because they paid them twice what they paid the National Army, and uh, that's what's coming. That's what they know. They they know they're protected. So you can be sure. Watch out. I'm making a prediction here. Now, just because it's a prediction doesn't mean it's going to happen. But this is how they're thinking. This arrogance that the elect that the, the elected officials have in European countries of telling the natives to go fuck themselves while molly coddling uh, the refugees is based on the fact that they know they have backup. They have they have they have, they have and that backup is tooling up the new Irish or the new G British or the new whatever the Germans or whatever they are tooling them up, and. Uh, that they, they know that. They've all been whispering. You don't worry about it. If, if it push, push, worse came to happen and the, the Irish people started saying enough already, we'll just give guns to the to the fellas in we have in the DP centre. So they're barracks. That's, some of them are even moved into barracks some of, uh, around the country. And even military barracks have, are being re reimagined as refugee centres. They're not. They're, they're still barracks. They're quartering troops. They're quartering the future Republican Guard of the government and the establishment to protect them from the people. Uh, basically a police force so an ss type thing so we already have like a, a an instinctual stasi all these left-wing uh, activists who spy on people i mean stephen sutton found one on his facebook page the other day just basically a stasi mole a middle-aged woman in there spying on who's who he's talking to and, what he, and i found a few of them including one that worked for the irish times the which is the pravda of ireland the national propaganda service all the Lord, the Lord ha -ha's in uh, in the Irish Times and RTE, they're even spying on behalf of the establishment. And again, this is not a left wing; it's not a right wing thing. It's about the uh, it's about determination of of sovereignty of citizenship. And uh, the native, you know, it's the native people of this country have. We're, 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 you have to remember that the native Irish are longer on this this land than the Native Americans are in North America. Let that one sink in. But we're not allowed to be Native people. No. You know, and uh, we don't have the right mix where our ancestry is things that are unfashionable, like Vikings, like Saxons, like Normans. You know, we're, we're, you know, we're, made, of, we're made up of warrior, right, white, warrior European uh, races that are predominantly white skinned. Does that make us evil? No, just just have this. It's an accident of birth. Yeah, it's an accident of birth. There's another thing too. I've noticed a lot of these, a lot of these pro immigration group people in this country are unattractive or annoying white middle aged women. Often, very unattractive. And a lot of it has to do is they think they can't get themselves an Irish man. So they think they can get themselves a you know a man a mandingo from overseas. That's what that's what's driving lots of them. They're un, you know they're unattractive women who have no men in their lives because Irish men wouldn't want them because they're either fucking annoying or they're ugly, and uh, so they think they can get themselves a foreigner, a swarty, you know, dark skinned foreigner who will want them, which is that's a really racist thing when you think about it, isn't it? Like they're sitting there thinking, you know, I can't get a man here, but I can import us. I can import, I can import my, my it's, it's sex trafficking, really, when you think about it, isn't it? Isn't it like the, an ugly white Irish woman who can't find it, get an Irish man importing immigrants in the hope she can get one of them? It's sex trafficking when you think about it. It's no different than these men who import Filipino wives uh, because Irish women don't want them. You know, it's no... But there's, there's, you know, it's 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 the same thing, isn't it? It's a sad old thing when a fella does it, which is his own. And anyway, it's his own, it's own private business what he does. But when she does it, she's uh, she's saving the world. But it's it's motivated by the same thing: an ugly fucker who can't get laid. It's the same. It's motivated by the same thing. Now I tell you, I've told you about people here who are in the bash de Foch scene, and one of them grew up in apartheid South Africa. And uh, would had manservants and coolies and all that kind of thing growing up, 
And here they are living in Ireland now, telling the rest of us we're all fascists for not uh, opening our borders. And I'm like, what? And I just realised it's it's she's just continuing her colonial mentality. That, there's a lot of those. Um, you know, you know me. I have loads of English friends, and I love English people, and uh, and family members and everything. And uh, but I'm talking about a certain type. You know, the home counties. You know. Britishers rather than English people they were, they sort of like leftovers from the colonial times you know and uh, there's lots of them living in Ireland telling the locals what to do it's really quite disturbing it's like back in the ninth it's like back in the, the the plantation days again you have like I was the Westport in Westport they set up a 15 minute city and every single one of the committee members were posh English from places like Hampshire and you know the home counties telling the locals what we have to implement a 15 minute city in the it, 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 project in Westport. You know, you know, this is like this max of colonialism, which just goes to show you the ones who are saying open borders now are the same ones who were the same. Fa- well, yeah, the same. Look at BLM, look at BLM, they're all made up of people who's fa- slaves and everything, or or made money from the slavery business, all poshies, you know. Where and they're telling working class people who didn't have a pot to piss in. I find that amazing. It's one of the one of the paradoxes of England is there's never been a revolution there. I mean, even Marx said that. You have the most oppressed. You have the richest, powerful nation on earth, and you had tens of thousands of people a night sleeping over ropes in the East End of London. You had the the absolute enormous wealth of the empire, and you had mill workers in Lancashire and Yorkshire. Uh, giving birth to babies underneath the uh, the weaving machine, the you know the steam powered steam spindles, and it's like how there was never a revolution in, in Britain is beyond me. And I think they con- you know the way they they in the past they con- well maybe a hundred years ago maybe seventy years ago and more they con- 80, 90 years ago they controlled the Irish with the Catholic Church. I think they used the royal family in England to do that. I think they got made them believe that if we, if we start a revolution, oh no, the poor royal family. I'm I'm, ju- I'm not I'm not I'm just saying that I'm not saying that's the, the real reason, but it's always amazed me that England never had a revolution, never, because of all the wealth that came into it, almost nothing trickled down to the to the working class. Only in recent times, even, like I can remember visiting my cousins in Birmingham and Liverpool when I was a kid, and they had less than us. My my cousins in Sparkbrook in Birmingham still had still had an outdoor toilet in the back where we lived in Ballymun in an apartment in a flat block of flats with central heating, cable TV, and hot and cold running water. I'm not saying that was everyone in England lived like my my aunt and uncle in Sparkbrook back in the seventies in the early seventies, but that's how it was. And yet we were the poor country. We were the country that was col- oppressed by the colonial, you know, British Empire. Although technically speaking, we were part of the Union back then. But and yet, but we, we yeah, and here was the ones who actually lived in England and had less than us. Uh, it just always amazed me that always amazed me, and uh, and they're more than capable of like staging a revolution. If you, another thing too was they moved all the men overseas, the ones who would have fought to take over the um, the British establishment. Well, it was easy. They were all in places like India or New Zealand or South Africa. So they got their, their fighting age men in England and they put them all over the world in the empire as soldiers. You know, they all died at Waterloo and things like that. Or in the Somme. Or Passchendaele or the Dardanelles. And yeah, so there you go. So that's how they did it. They just they just moved the fighting age men away when whenever they were feeling a bit nervous into wars. And now they're now they're importing the wars into our lands. But they're losing. They're not winning. You can see it. The the, the swagger, the swagger went out of them with the the COVID thing. They didn't. Do you remember the height of the COVID thing? They had the swagger was at its max. For Radger smirk and making his press his his, his press conferences. It, it it didn't work. It didn't work. It, as soon as they all started dropping dead of the needle craft, it all went very quiet. And uh, they're still dropping like flies. My prediction. See, I, I told you, I'm not a prophet. 
All these assholes before Christmas have said, oh, well, we'll, well sure, we'll be back after Christmas, and we'll see how many died. Well, millions have died, motherfuckers, millions. Just like I said they would. It wasn't prophecy. I didn't have an oracle. I just put two and two together and says there's no way they could have produced a safe and effective medication in that period of time, especially something like an RNA vaccine. Oh, needle cracked. It's not prophecy, it's common sense. It's the, what you throw out the window for stay home, safe lives. It's just amazing, really. Amazing. And uh, But we know greatest education ever. It's like, you know, the whole thing. Who were the, one, who were the ones who would have pointed out Anne Frank to the Gestapo? The ones who said, stay home, save lives. Where's your mask? Maintain social distance. Bash the fosh. Open borders now. They're the ones who would have pointed out Anne Frank. The so-called liberals. Because it's just about orthodoxy. The same people in Ireland today who are members of the left wing are all members of the establishment. They call themselves left Antifa and left wing extremists, but they're all establishment families. And the globalist agenda that they support now against the Irish was just like their grandparents would have supported the Catholic Church, bish Catholic bishops against the poor. And it's just they're just orthodoxy bots. They're just orthodoxy robots. And the present orthodoxy is the bullshit we're being we're being handed over but that's where the smear that's where the smear can all come from now all these politicians in ireland who are yeah 50 percent of them are absolute morons absolute morons they wouldn't be able to survive stacking shelves in a uh and it's the same in your country in, in a supermarket they wouldn't be able to do it and the other 50 percent are psychopaths who have a swagger because they know that they have an army ready to protect them. If the worst came to worse, you know, going down to Faisal and Abdul, you know, in down in uh, the in the, the the center and say, do you have any? Did you have any? Did you have any uh, military experience while you're in Balbania? Yeah, I was in the commandos for three years. Here's a machine gun. Now go and tell the Irish to do this. It's coming, folks. If you don't believe me, it's coming. And those of you who are laughing, well, it's not coming. It's planned to come, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. But that's, the, that's, that's, that's why they have this cockiness and arrogance about them. That's why they go down to villages in, in County Clare and tell people, I don't give a fuck what you think, and then go in and scatter rose petals at the feet of, of people who just arrived from Albania and places like that, uh, Georgia, and, you know, that scatter rose petals at their feet because that's, their, that's going to be their Republican Guard, their SS. You mark my words. They've already, they've already written up policies. And if you're a member of the Irish Defence Forces, and you can sit there smirking and laughing at me while you're watching this, but you won't be smirking and laughing when you're taking orders from some guy from Georgia because they will supersede the National Army and the Defence Forces. Uh, just like the SS superseded the, the Wehrmacht. And uh, the only difference is they won't be fighting with you, they'll be fighting against you. So don't 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 kid yourself. And besides, they do the same thing here. Where is all the Irish Defence Forces? They're in Sierra Leone. They're in the Golan Heights. They're in Kosovo. They're everywhere except in Ireland. That's how you get rid of them. You just you send them off on UN duties, and then when something goes wrong, you invent a new Republican Guard type army overnight. You know, the history never history is the greatest education ever. We think that history ended. You know, we th we assume that, like, when the Soviet Union fell, we never have to worry about KGBs or Red Terrors or Bolsheviks or purges or, you know, tra the deportation of the Kulaks. See, that's what's happening in Ireland. You have to understand that. Those of you who I, I recently, some stupid fucking retarded monkey asshole... Uh, in Donegal, I, I used to know, and uh, I tried to explain to him that what are you what are you voting for people before profit for? You're a small farm owner in Donegal. Why are you voting for these Bolsheviks? They're the ones who will take your house and farm off you because they see you as a kulak. And he goes, "What's a what's a what's a kulak?" And then he goes on Wikipedia and he says, a kulak is a, a landowner in Russia. 
and yeah, okay. And um, what happened to the Kulaks? What did the Bolsheviks do to the Kulaks? That's your future. And the fucking Egypt was too stupid to actually go one step further and see what the point I was making between Bolsheviks and Kulaks. And now here we have Paul Murphy, People for Profit, and all the left wing parties in Ireland saying that people who have extra land have to give it up and hand it over to foreigners for the revolution, for the greater good. And now they're finding out what a kulak is. So that's what people down in Inch and, and places like in, in Lisdoon and Varna and other rural communities around the country who are suddenly find themselves being snubbed by the politicians. They're to do kulaks. You're a kulak. You own land. You own property. It doesn't belong to the state. And that's why the government in this country are allowing all the, all the Bolsheviks in all the extreme left-wing parties to actually, you know, write public policy. They're writing Bolshevik. See, they, now we have with the hate speech laws in Ireland, we now have the, the, the statutory implementation of the Stasi, of the Red Terror, of, you know, so here we go. You know, if people think that history changed, that history ends with history. Like that World War II end, we'd never have to deal with an SS or Gestapo ever again. And here we have the same thing, just another different thing. We, you know, we never, because the Soviet Union fell, all the purges, secret police, spying, political dissonance, people being afraid to talk, uh, kulaks having their land seized, that, that all stopped. And here we have, here we are in Ireland. Ireland is undergoing its Bolshevik revolution right now. And who is the Bolsheviks? The government. The government are attacking the people. The government are the politics. And if anyone knows anything about the history of politics, that the, basically the more left-wing people are, the more psychotic they are. Because it, in order to believe that, that anything beyond moderate socialism works, you'd have to, you have to be mentally ill to some degree. And by moderate socialism, I mean very small stuff like public housing for people that their own that don't can't afford to buy a home on their own or helping them out or a national education system or some kind of public health care system that's moderate socialism what these people are and we already have all that what these people are want now is pure pure vicious bolshevism then that's what they are they're bolsheviks and they they, they, if you look at the people who support them, they're the same kind of people who supported the Bolsheviks or the Chinese Cultural Revolution. They're the same. They're unstable people of low intelligence, highly educated, but dumb. They'll often have you know, degrees and stuff like that, but they don't have a real life experience because they work in government programs or NGOs. They don't know what it's like to be a real person. They believe, you see, the, the, one of the things that happened that the Greens have always tried to hide is the Agenda 90 program. The Green parties in the, on their Agenda 90 program want front and centre of all their issues with the legalisation of sexual relationships between adults and children. And it, 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 they had to hide it real quickly. But that's the truth when it comes out. That's the truth when it comes out. Remember, the Agenda 90 Green Platform, and this applies to global Green Parties, because the German Green Party is the Green Party that runs all the others, just like the Politburo in Russia ran all the communist countries around the world, uh, set their agenda for them. And therefore, you know, this is, this is the, the, the Agenda 90 thing. The Greens are always hiding it. If you look at my documentary about the Green Party, you see that. And uh, they they hid that agenda. They're, they, they're desperate to hide that. And now they say things like, "Oh, it was it was youths that thought that could, they were so radical." And you know, all these youths that were so radical, and all the people behind it, like uh, you know the Grand Bazaar, and all these people who wrote books. You know, your man Bigent, who wrote a book about the sexual, the sex, the magnificent, and the magnificent and wonderful thing between the sec of the sexuality of underage of little children. And he's now a big shot player in the European movement. He wrote a book, I think his name was, or Bertoy, I can't remember his name, it's from French cunt, but uh, uh, Lefty. And, uh, you know, they were all, they're not, there wasn't, it wasn't youthful exuberance that made them, 
uh, a five or a, a 13 year old is aware that you shouldn't molest children and yet here were people in their 20 uh, university students writing down uh, working policy documents on the legalization of sex between children and adults and they're all big shots in the eu wef to this day they didn't they didn't leave politics they just got caught they just got caught and what happened down in Clare this week when that politician went down there and said, fuck you to the locals, uh, while mollycoddling the new Irish, as they call them, that was the same thing. That wasn't a mistake or stupidity. He, he knows he's, he's safe. He's like a mafia boss. He knows he has his soldiers behind him, and the soldiers are the ones in the, in the, in the DP centre. But it won't happen because something tells me that these you have to remember the kind of person that enters into politics is as stupid as they are pathological and uh the smirks and the arrogance you know they only get away with it for so long you know in all our countries you have to remember that 70 percent of the population are fucking idiots fucking idiots okay this is why they inject themselves with untested needle craft uh, and yet, but the 30% who aren't idiots are usually the ones who fix everything. And the 30% are, will always do it. They'll always do it. So don't, you know, this is why I've always been against the whole thing of being evangelical, waking people. Well, you got to wake the people up. No way. Uh, it, 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 they, they'll eventually destroy themselves. They always do. History is, history is nothing but the, the graveyard of, of utopians. Of utopians. And anyone who seeks utopia, seeks utopia, is really a fascist, you know, because this concept of having a world where everyone is, everything is wonderful, is not, it's, it's a world according to everything is wonderful that they personally want. You know, utopian, that's why utopias are always vicious, fascist, totalitarian shitholes wrapped up in a belief of a perfect society where everyone is like holding hands. It's going to be really interesting, but see, we're not part of it. We in the tribes are, are, are not part of it. We're watching it. We're observing it. So, so when the day comes when the, the NPCs go, but, but, but there's a soldier outside my front door with a machine gun. Uh, he can't speak English, and, you know, he's friends with the local TD from Fina Gale. Uh, well, how did this happen? We'll be sitting there going, we we don't have that problem because we saw it coming years ago. Look after yourselves. Sanguine notes remember we got through a trillion dollar propaganda war to sell the scandemic.